You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Hi there, Slow Down Society. Steph here, and we are on episode number 107 of the Slow Living Podcast. And today, we are going to talk about the elusive American dream. Is the American dream alive? Is it dead? Is it taking a pause? Has it decided to slow down? And how do we breathe some life and energy and revitalize the American dream? Depending on who you are, you may feel quite strongly about whether or not this is happening anymore and whether or not there is a possibility to live out your own version of the American dream. I am recording this bright and early on a uh, Friday eve, a Thursday morning. Um, I live in the suburbs of the Silicon Valley. It is very expensive to live here. Um, I feel like I am living my own version of the American dream, the American dream that I thought about and dreamt about as a little girl. I wanted children. I wanted to be married. I wanted to focus on my children. And um, for, for a long time, my number one goal was to be a stay-at-home mom. And I did that. And, and some people actually say that that's anti-feminist of me, that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Um, but my version of feminism is doing what you want <laughs> and, and, and not being told you can't do something um, because of your gender. I am living um, a very privileged life. Um, I have been in debt. I have been unemployed. I have been gainfully employed. I have worked for myself. I have done all three of the mom acronyms of stay at home, work at home, work out of the home. Um, I've, I've worked for myself. I've had my own company as an entrepreneur. Um, and now I do a whole bunch of a whole bunch of little things in order to live out my version of the American dream. And if you are tuning in today and you're feeling a little pessimistic and you think um, that the dream is dead and it's not worth dreaming anymore and there's no point in it um, because society has changed, the economy has changed, the government has changed. Um, maybe you're listening to this and you're in a different country and you don't even know what I'm talking about when I talk about the American dream. In the Declaration of Independence, um, it says that Americans, um, as basic rights, have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Over time, this has morphed and people misquote the Declaration of Independence and they say that it is the right to health, wealth, and the pursuit of happiness. So let's kind of unpack that a little bit. Americans have always sort of had this pioneer um, mentality and, and the, the reason our, the entire country was founded was we didn't want to be told what to do by... Um, by the English monarchy and the Catholic church. So we broke away and, and started this, this new land. And, uh, we did so really by kind of taking it away from the indigenous people who were here. So if you look at it from the, the, the viewpoint of the, the European settlers who came here to create a new land, it's kind of romanticized. Um, and, and if you work hard and, and clear the brush and essentially kick out all of the indigenous people, you have this 
life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness or health, wealth, and the pursuit of happiness. If you just dream and work hard and go for it, it happens. If you look at it from the viewpoint of the indigenous people who were essentially um, slaughtered, which isn't a very nice word, but that is what happened. Um, I, I, it's, it's not a good thing. <laughs> not, not a good thing. So I don't know who you are or, or where you are when you are listening to this. Um, but in order to get you from where you are to where you want to go, my best suggestion is to allow yourself the, the idea of hope, the idea that there's something else out there that you can get if you work towards it. Um, not the idea that someone is going to come in and, and take it away from you. So there's no point in hoping and there's no point in trying and there's no point in striving. It's a very kind of debilitating um, mindset. Um, if, if you're stuck in that kind of hole or a ditch um, and you feel as if you can't get out of it and, and you're actually in kind of maybe a clinical depression or a funkity funk and you just cannot get out, I would highly recommend reaching out to your doctor and, and letting them know that you feel hopeless, that you feel like um, it's not worth doing the things anymore. Um, and, and maybe getting a, a little bit of, of help, maybe a chemical re-regulation for your brain in, in the form of a tiny little tablet that you take every day until you don't need to anymore. Um, or, or some talk therapy or some cognitive behavioral therapy, something like that. Um, if that's who you are, that's who you are. And if you want to change it, my best suggestion is to, to start asking yourself questions of how, how do I change this? And if the answer that comes back is I need help, I need to talk to my doctor. I want you to do that. I want you to do that because me talking to you <laughs> through your earbuds is not going to help the situation if you really are in a depressed state. Okay. Health, wealth, the pursuit of happiness, the, the, the quintessential American dream. Is it dead? Uh, in the slowed down society Facebook group, I asked that question um, and what people's thoughts were. And, and spoiler alert, um, I do not think it's dead. Uh, that, that is, is my, <laughs> is my viewpoint. Um, that said, I completely, um, honor and, um, and accept that not everyone feels that way. And, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, so in the slow down society Facebook group, I asked that and, uh, and one of the the member Scarlett, she wrote in, um, first off, she quoted an Oxford English Dictionary definition, and she said that the American dream is the ideal, the ideal that every citizen of the United States should have an equal opportunity to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative. Using this definition, I don't really feel the premise has changed. I believe that people's hard work, determination, and initiative have changed. Most people can look to their own families and see disparity. I have a child who teems with those qualities, and I have another who tries half-heartedly and wonders why success isn't raining down upon them. Same with the people around me. I have a lot of successful friends who have put in the work. Some have traveled some pretty rough roads to get to where they are but they were determined. And then I have friends who are too busy caring about things that don't matter and are living paycheck to paycheck, blaming, quote unquote, the system for their shortcomings. So that's a lot to unpack here. Um, and in the last line, um, that last line uh, where she, um, she said that some people uh, have given up on the initiative and in sense, then they're living paycheck to paycheck, um, which isn't the American dream. The, the American dream of, of feeling good, 
of knowing that there's money in the bank and 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 that you're you're making it and and prosperity um i believe is still something worth working towards um I talk about it in in the five steps to slow living. If what you're doing right now is not helping to set you up for the future where you feel strong and stable and sustainable, that's a red flag. That's something to pay attention to. If what you're doing on an everyday basis isn't sustainable and isn't going to get you to where you want to be, then then th- hit pause and and do some work and figure it out. And the very first step is to declutter things that aren't working. If you're overspending, figure it out. If you're not making enough money in your current job or your current profession, figure out what is the next best step. And and that will be different for every person. Um, Another one of my readers, Emily, wrote in and, and she disagreed with that last um, part of what Scarlett had said about um, people living paycheck to paycheck um, aren't working hard enough. And she pointed out that she's been in education um, for the past 20 years and has um, a degree from an Ivy League college, a master's, I believe, and um, is only making $10,000 more than she was when she first started 20 years ago. So in 2003, and that's not a livable wage. And so in then her viewpoint, the American dream is dead. And so, so let's think about that there. Remember, we were pioneers. We broke away from people telling us what to do, um, from, from the, the different European countries and monarchies and, um, We were trying to break away from the Catholic Church at the time, back when the U.S. got founded. So the idea that Emily is disappointed that she has been in the same job for 20 years and isn't making the amount of money that she thought she might be making, and she went to an Ivy League college in order to have the qualifications to have this job, but it's still not paying enough for her to feel comfortable. Isn't a lack of hard work. She says she works very, very hard, and I agree with her. But the thing is, the rules have changed, and you have to adapt to that, even if you don't like it. Even if you had the idea at a young age that if you went to this school and you followed this plan and you did this job, it would all be okay. That might not be the truth anymore, for that particular job. And it doesn't mean the American dream is dead. It means you have to pivot. I mean, I'm talking to you through a microphone, through this contraption, and now you're hearing me probably on your smartphone. None of this existed 20 years ago. The game has changed. The, the rules have changed. But, but the whole premise hasn't that if you are... adaptive, (laughs) if you adapt to the current times and and take a pause and don't just keep trudging forward without an end goal in sight. So if the idea is that you've programmed your GPS and you know where you're headed and maybe you're headed to a certain number in the bank, a certain retirement number. We talked about figuring out your FIRE number, which is financial independence, retire early. That has always been where my metaphoric GPS is is pointed. So you get to that number by figuring out what your yearly household expenses are. And just to make the math easy right now, if you are spending $100,000 a year times 25, you need $2.5 million in the bank in order to retire. Many people's numbers can be different because they're they're thinking, well, I'm spending $100,000 now because I still have a mortgage and I'm paying for orthodontics and I'm trying to fund um I'm trying to fund these retirement accounts. I'm trying to fund kids college accounts. Really, what I think is my yearly expenses when I retire at 60 or 65 or whatever the age is isn't going to be that much. It'll be 6 million, 6 60,000 a month, uh, um a year. Great. 
Multiply that by 25. You figure out what your number is. And if your day-to-day job that you're working at for 20 years isn't getting you there, then you've got to pivot. And it doesn't necessarily mean you throw away your 20-year career, but maybe you augment, maybe you supplement, maybe you do something else, some sort of investment idea. Maybe you do a side hustle. I I don't like the word hustle. This is a, a, a very slow down and live the life of your dreams podcast, but sometimes you've got to work a little harder to get to where you want to go. So I like the idea of, of running a very, very, very long marathon. But every once in a while, you've got to do some sprinting. You got to get up a hill. You got to turn on a little bit more gas. You got to light the fire under you and, and really make things happen. And putting in that little bit of effort to get up over the hill will, will take you so much farther than trudging and looking all around at the people passing you and being annoyed by them and being upset by them. Um, Nick Loper, he runs the um, Side Hustle uh, Nation podcast. I think it's called Side Hustle Nation. But anyway, um, I've been on his email list for quite a long time. And when I first got started writing online, I was looking for, for side hustles. I was looking for work at home jobs where I could make money while staying home with my kids. And many of them were scams. Right now, we are living in this time where anyone, anyone can have a side hustle and all they need is a computer and, and an internet connection. And they can, they can go down to, to their local a discount store and buy things in bulk and then flip them and sell them on eBay or Etsy or, or even Amazon. Amazon has FBA, which is fulfillment by Amazon. And, and it's free to, to start a business. There's literally no overhead anymore. And there used to be so many hurdles. Um, the, uh, uh so be, <laughs> we live in Silicon Valley. And, and so I am surrounded by millionaires um, every day. And um, people here who are millionaires do not feel wealthy. Um, in, in order to feel wealthy here, you, you really have to probably be a multi-millionaire. And, and there are absolutely millionaires here who are living paycheck to paycheck. Um. It's not what you make, it's what you save. And I don't want you to squash the next generation in any way. So if you're a parent, you want to pump your kids up. You want them to believe that whatever they want in life, they can get. Maybe they're not going to be a professional basketball player or a professional um or a musician on stage, or maybe they're not going to be the next Kardashian or social media influencer. And I think sometimes people think that's the embodiment of the American dream. And and to me, it's not. To, To me, it's going through the five steps to slow living and applying it to the step-by-step approach of the peace pyramid um, that's taught in the simple shortcuts to peace course in that you want to feel like you have ownership of your time, ownership of your health, of your finances, of your organization, of your relationships. It's climbing into bed knowing that it's all going to be okay. Even if you have a bad day, even if you get like the icky news that you've got to replace the roof and and you didn't think that was going to happen this year, you thought it was going to happen three years from now, and that's what you budgeted for. No, knowing that you're going to be okay, even if all of a sudden you get this bill that that you don't like, that's the feeling that we're trying to get to. Not fame, not elusive dripping, <laughs> dripping in gold fortune, um, uh, 
a, a client of mine, a coaching client, we were we were talking about um, winning the lottery because in this area, the Powerball was over a billion dollars. It was so high that the um, the marquee that they have in the Seven Elevens didn't have enough spots, so all it had was nine 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 millions, um, but it was like one point three billion or something like that. And then we were talking about whatever the percentage is of people who win the lottery and then lose it all. And um, I there there's uh, this docu series put out by a sports company. I think it's called Thirty by Thirty, but it's called Being Broke or Go Broke or Be Broke or something. But it was a documentary talking about um, professional athletes and rappers who law who made millions, millions and millions and millions, and then lost it all. Um, because they didn't know how to manage money. Um, so, so being in charge of your financial literacy is, is huge because no one is going to swoop in and do it for you. And, and chances are you will not win the lottery. And if you did, you need to have financial literacy. So my favorite book, I've mentioned it before on the podcast, I'm going to mention it again, is The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. Also, if something has changed in your life, and you haven't changed or adapted along with it, you've got to pay attention because staying in whatever it is you're in, in this funk, in this, in this cubicle or, or whatever it is, and you're not happy, um, that's a wake up call. So it's a very quick, short read and it's a parable. Um, called who moved my cheese and, uh, it's an international bestseller. It's been uh, translated into many, many, many languages. Um, I am sure you can find it at a used bookstore. Um, I would recommend getting the little book versus downloading it. Um, one, because I don't agree in piracy ever (laughs) as a published author. I know you can find anything for free on the internet, but I do believe that you should, um, buy books and and support authors. But you can also check it out from your local library because uh, the library has then bought the books from the authors. But Who Moved My Cheese? Spencer Johnson. It is a parable about mice and um, the cheese. The reward has moved and you can complain and be sad and, and be unmotivated because the cheese has moved and you're really disappointed about it. Or you can move, you can decide to take a different path. If you're, and so you're kind of envisioning mice in a maze, take a different path, go a different way. Um, And also I want you to really uh, decide on purpose that your identity is not your job, is not your profession. It's just what you do to go make money. And, And I want you to make money in a legal way, in an ethical way, in a way that feels good. Um, but the, the, the bottom line is if, if you're working for um, a company, a bureaucracy such as education or, or the government, um, you're, you're just a cog in the wheel and, and you are most definitely replaceable. Um, I was joking with um, a client last week on a coaching call who's kind of at a crossroads of deciding whether or not she should leave the company she works for, um, or go do something completely different that she's been fantasizing about for a good 15 years. She has this opportunity to do something completely and totally different, but she doesn't know what it'll be like because it's new, because it's different, but she keeps thinking about it. And, and so we were talking and she's like, yeah, but I'm really good at this one job and, and I, I can see the path, but, but we're, she was saying that it was slowly killing her, (laughs) her words, not mine, but, but if you have two things and one is a sure thing, you will trudge forward bit by bit to this elusive retirement age, retirement number, but it is soul sucking and you don't like it, but it pays the bills, or there's something else that you've always wanted to do, and a friend of yours will get you the interview and get your foot in the door, 
and it feels shiny and sparkly and new, but it's a little bit unknown and a little bit scary. That was her choice. That was her, her grappling. So I asked her to read who moved my cheese. Um, and then just kind of go quiet and, and, and think, what is the next best step to take? What am I supposed to do here? And, and just wait, wait for your subconscious, your, your brain, the back of your mind to fill in the blanks, um, or pray on it and, and, and wait and see what God or the universe comes back with. But the answers are there when you go quiet and just listen and you'll know by how you feel. So another really good way to make a decision such as that is to flip a coin and, and declare path A is heads and path B is tails. And then when you're in a good mood and you're calm, not frantic, you, you need to settle yourself, flip the coin and see how it lands and then own that decision for a little bit and see how you feel. You'll either feel relieved or you'll feel disappointed. And that's your answer. Then you'll know what the next best step to take is. And then one last thing, when we're talking about um, kind of raising this next generation, we had, um, I've got bigger kids. I've got older kids than maybe some of you. Uh, mine are now 22, uh, 19 in a week, and 13. And We've always sort of joked with them that if they wanted to live in the San Francisco Bay Area, they needed to make um, a lot of money. And it, it's really just a, a fact. And so when I talk to people who have teenagers or um, sometimes even I get on the phone with um, kids in college and, and they'll, they'll find me some way and they want a free coaching call. So I do offer free coaching calls and you can sign up if you'd like. And that's at stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. But I ended up on a call once and then I do this with my own kids constantly. Um, you got to figure out the end goal. Where do you want to live? What kind of car do you want to drive? What is your lifestyle like? And, and that has a, a price tag attached. From there, then... You, you look, okay, well, what kind of professions, what kind of jobs, wh what do I do to make that money? And then you've got your list. And then from there, you decide, do any of those feel good? Do I want to do any of those things? And then from there, you figure out what you need to study in school, what schools offer that, and, and how to get the, the best value education in order to fulfill the requirements for that profession in order to live the lifestyle you want. So just in a very joking way, Adam and I have always kind of joked with our three kids that, well, if you want to live here, you've got three choices. You can be a doctor, a lawyer, or a dentist. And, and we've just sort of been jokey, but then also realistic. And, 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 and maybe you don't want to live here. Maybe you want to live in a lower cost area of the country, um, and you don't need to make as much money as you do in order to live here. Great. That's fine. I, I don't feel like I need to uh, handcuff the kids to the San Francisco Bay Area, but that's how we've always sort of talked to them. Um, on a side note, we once walked through a house in our neighborhood, and it was up for sale, and we were on a neighborhood walk, and I may have shared this story with you before, um, but I'm going to share it again. Uh, and we, I like walking through open houses. I like seeing how people lay out the furniture uh, in, in a house similar to ours because it's been staged properly. Um, and usually I realize, huh, there's hardly any furniture in here. <laughs> Maybe we just have too many furniture pieces in our house. Um, but the realtor saw me walking in with three kids and my husband and he sort of stopped us in the front entry. I don't even think we made it onto the into the front entry, and we're still on the porch. And he said, oh, uh, you better snag this now, because if you don't, 
when the time your kids are adults, they'll never be able to afford to live here. And gosh, I just pounced on him. And I said, excuse me? And he says, well, it's a good deal now, um, but your kids won't be able to afford to live here. So you might as well buy it for him now and hold on to it as an investment property. And I said, excuse me, you have no idea what my children are capable of. No idea at all. And I grabbed the flyer out of his hand and I kind of stomped through the house and I was pissed. I was really pissed. And uh, when we were leaving, Adam sort of kind of like, uh, like blocked me and, and helped me get out without having to make eye contact or, or walk by that realtor again. But, but that idea that you can't do something is what really fires me up. Like, excuse me, don't tell me <laughs> what I can or cannot do. And don't tell me what my kids can or cannot do. Um, because I believe in hope and I believe in optimism and I believe in figuring out where it is you want to go and then how to get there. And those are the steps that you need to take along the way in order to get there. And that is what it's all about. That's what slow living is all about, is slowly, steadily, sustainably getting to where you want to go in life. So I I rattled off a few book titles for you. If you've got a pen and paper, I'm going to give them to you again, and then I will try my hardest to remember to link them in the show notes. Um, the podcast notes are all available at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast notes. The first book that I talked about was The Simple Path to Wealth. That is J.L. Collins. There is another book that I really like, and it's upstairs, so I don't know the name of the author right now, but it's called Family Wealth. And that is a great book on, on just um, creating wealth within the family. Um, Side Hustle Nation, that is Nick Loper. Um, I'll link up to that. But there's thousands of ideas that Nick has come up with of creating little extra pockets of money. Maybe it's cleaning houses. Maybe it's tennis lessons. Maybe it's picking up poop um, from dogs in your neighborhood, walking dogs. There's all of these different ways um, where you can get a little bit extra pocket money um, to kind of squirrel away. If you're a teacher tutoring, um, we had a teacher in our neighborhood who spent every afternoon at the library and every morning during the summertime months at the library tutoring $40 an hour and just pocketed the cash. So all of the salary was, was paying bills and being saved. But the cash... That's what was the kind of day-to-day living expenses, going to the grocery store, um, getting Starbucks, um, giving $20 here and there to the kids every time they want to go downtown. That was the pocket money, and, um, and she made a whole bunch of cash, cold hard cash um, that she had, and that was her spending money. Um, who Moved My Cheese is Spencer Johnson. Um, and then if you've got kids... Zach Bissonnette uh, wrote two books. One is Debt Free You, and U is like the letter U for university, Debt Free You. And then he also wrote How to Be um, Smarter and be- uh, Smarter. So I think, so something about faster, smarter, and better looking than your parents, or maybe it's wiser, smarter, and better looking than your parents. Um, but that's a great book. And that's definitely written for this kind of like Gen Z um, uh, mindset. And and he talks about how, um, I think it's smarter, richer, and better looking than your parents. That's what it is, Zach Bissonnette. And he's talking to this young kind of Gen Z that um, you're not doomed to failure. And yes, the rules have changed but it doesn't mean that the American dream is dead. I want to talk a little bit again about privilege and kind of circle back to that conversation and acknowledge that the playing field is not the same for everybody. And this is absolutely true. And it is not fair. It's, it's simply not fair. And I believe that everyone deserves should, and, and should be paid a livable wage. And I believe that if you work hard, you should be paid proportionately for that work. And it isn't fair that it's not this way. 
I know this, and you know this, and I hate it that this is simply how the world works. And if I could fix it, I would. I absolutely would, but I can't. And unfortunately, you can't either. And the best thing you can do is to play the game in the way you can, in the best way, with the cards you've been dealt. And not everyone is actually playing with a full deck of cards. And I know that. And again, it's not fair. This is not an even playing field. You're not going to be able to solve all of society's ills in this lifetime. But what you can do, and what I suggest to those who reach out to me for help in living their own version of the American dream, is to focus on the things you can control, such as your health. Um, your wake up time, your go to sleep time, who you allow in your life, what kind of outside noise from social media and the news you allow into your life. Decide what you want in advance, what your future looks like, and then slowly, carefully, thoughtfully, and methodically create a plan to get there. And if you're not now where you are, Excuse me, if you're not where you want to be, that's your answer. That's your path. That's where the GPS is. That's your work. And being sad and disappointed is valid. I don't want you to dismiss that in any way forward. But it, but it's not going to move you forward. Only action is. So what are your action steps? Remember, it's mindset, action, and consistency. What can you do? Well, you can read. You can research, you can get involved with local politics and and maybe try and help implement some policy change if that's what you'd like. But complaining isn't an action and being upset isn't an action. It might make you feel better to commiserate with other people who are complaining, but the only way to get out of a funkety funk or a hole is to start taking teeny tiny baby steps forward. Again, not fair, not right. I don't want to dismiss anyone's personal experience or life situation. What has happened or has happened in the past, in society, in your own life, it's a fact. It's data. It's then up to you to figure out how to next take the best step forward in the game that you're playing. And I am not a fan of of dismissive people or or victim blaming in any way. It kind of reminds me of of Dr. Phil when he was on Oprah and he had this panel of people and he turns to them and he says, you're fat because you want to be fat. Yeah, no, that's that's not helpful or useful in any way to, to victim blame. No. Not what we're doing here. Not what we're talking about. Um, It also reminds me of Dave Ramsey, uh, same ilk as Dr. Phil, who thinks that the reason millennials can't buy a house is because they're too busy eating avocado toast every day. No, no, that's not true. The, The fact is everything has changed and it's not fair and it's not right. And in dismissing that, um, isn't helpful. And, and it's very victim blamey. Um, and, and the fact is, actually, in our own family, we had an, an older generation who had a family of five with single person who was able to buy a house. And, and that, that I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> call out any markers of who it is in our family, but, but that person was able to raise five children and worked in a grocery store. Is that possible now? No. Not at all. Is that fair? No, no. It just is what it is. But since then, times have changed. Things have changed. There are new jobs being developed and created every single day. And in hoping and wishing and dreaming and praying that the past comes back to life or gets changed isn't going to help you move forward in the future. And and it's really actually not healthy to spend a lot of time kind of dwelling in that. So again, like I I talked about at the beginning of this podcast, if you find yourself in that situation and you can't get out of the hole or the ditch that you're in, please reach out to your doctor. Um, I'm I'm just a lady on the internet talking into a microphone that you're hearing. I I cannot help um, 
fix a lot of these things. I can help slowly mentor you and guide you to get you to where you want to go, but I I can't fix if, if this is truly a medical problem. So I hope this helps a little bit. This is definitely a tricky conversation. There's a lot of underlying socioeconomic and race and gender and sexual inequality in the world, and it stinks, and it's not fair, and I'm sorry. But my hope is, though, that today you are able to garner just hopefully a little bit of encouragement to help you keep moving forward towards your own version of the American dream, not the lady down the street, not someone that you saw on social media, your own version. I want you to keep your eyes on your own paper and do the work bit by bit, inch by inch. Thanks so much, Slow Down Society, for being here. I think you are wonderful. Um, If you've got any questions, email me. I'm at Steph at StephanieOday.com. If you are enjoying this podcast, share it with your friends, share it with your family, Um, leave a review. Um, I would would love to to hear from you. Um, I'm on socials at StephanieOday.com and I think you're great. I think you're wonderful. The American dream is not dead. All right. Take care, pretty people. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.